Welcome to Centauri Stir Fry. How the heck are you? Hope you guys are being excellent to each other out there. Today, we're going to dust off two Batman black and white statues, this time designed by Kelly Jones, a famous Batman cover artist. But initially, he was known for Dead Man. Back in the 90s, I think it was 1990 actually, he redesigned Dead Man to make him more look like a, like a corpse, like, like he was actually rotting away. And it was a really cool, fresh new look and a take on Dead Man and make it look more like a horror comic. And uh, I think he did some work on Sandman with Neil Gaiman, but I think what everyone knows is Batman Nightfall. Bam! New stand copy of Batman 497. 1993. Uh, the director edition, I think, has a black thing. It says Batman's effed. Batman's in deep shit. I think that's what it says on the side there. Anyway, this is a really awesome cover. It's just exaggerated. It's just blown out. Just a totally ridiculous anatomy. That's just all 90s. You can smell that 90s goodness. And I love the 90s. I love 90s comics. The writing was fun. Maybe not the best, but super fun. But the art took top billing. Everybody was just way up top. McFarlane, Jim Lee, Sam Keith, man, Del Kion, and Kelly Jones. And I loved it. It was just like so, so cool. I mean, he's definitely an artist that you can spot right off the bat. Like, you can spot a comic book that he draws like 10 feet away. You can just see it. And you're like, Kelly Jones. I bet somewhere in Northern California, in like some heavy wooded area where some elite party is taking place, right? You've got Bernie Wrightson, Neil, <laughs> Neil Adam, and Sam Keith, Jack Nicholson. And they're all like having some kind of weird orgy. And then out comes Kelly Jones. That's what you got. I think you put all those things together and I think that's what his art style represents for me when I look at it. I know that's a weird place to go. Probably a little dark. But I'm just thinking that's what happened. I love his art style. You can check it out in these big, awesome omnibuses. But really, it's just the covers, honestly. But if you want to check out some great examples of interior work, check out Batman Blood Rain. And I think that's what this statue is going for. Where Batman tangles with Dracula. You can tell he's definitely not wanting to go out in the sun. Which is kind of, I mean, I don't either. I'm a ginger. So let's get a little closer look at these guys. We got Kelly Jones, Batman, and Bane. The Batman Black and White by Kelly Jones. Next to the Batman Black as Night, Batman Pop. The Kelly Jones Batman. Just an awesome, vampiric looking mother effort. <laughs> Am I supposed to cuss now? I don't know what the rules are anymore. Looking at this cape, you're like, what the heck is Kelly Jones thinking? What is he doing? Um, Batman can't possibly fight crime in that. That makes no sense. He's going to fall over and everyone's going to point and laugh. Kelly Jones is an interesting dude, man. I just, I would love to see his house. I don't know why. I would just like to go over there and just see what he's up to. You know, peek inside that medicine cabinet. Just see what that dude's all about. Okay, we get to the base. It's all one solid piece. The flat black used on this is really nice. And then the boots. Go get your shine box. And give me some chicken noodle soup. Stop being lazy. I mean, it might look like a big lob of black crap to you guys, but to me, it just looks like Kelly Jones just making Batman look ridiculous, which which I like. I like when Batman looks ridiculous. I mean, this dude is just like a creepy hobo vampire Batman. It's like, he's just all raggedy and just messed up. Like, you can almost smell this Batman. Like, he smells like wet potatoes, like old french fries. You know, not McDonald's french fries. Those things are like immortal. They live forever. I think they're radioactive. Now we get to the back of this freaking cape. Look at this thing. It looks like a spine. Like, it looks like vertebrae almost. It's just so cool. Great pose, too. It's just like, he really is just hissing like a cat. Like a scared cat. Like, like someone dropped a cucumber down there on the floor and he's... Ugh. Now to his face, which is kind of hard to film because he's kind of like, most of it's kind of blocked. He's blocking his face, but his teeth, his like lips are just like very like, I'm not really sure. He just looks like he's having the worst time, the worst day ever. He just looks like a monster. And those ears, that, you know, and the like the Kelly Jones ears are just like the most ridiculous, unrealistic you know, suit design you could ever think of. I mean, you could even walk through like a freaking gas station to fill up your Batmobile or pick out a Snickers with that fawn in your ass. You couldn't do it. Not in this suit. I try not to let, uh, you know, reality ruin my comic books. Like, I, I hate going over statues and, and even considering anatomy. Unless it's something really bad, like just poorly done. But if anatomy is like unrealistic, who cares, man? These are comic books. Uh, Kelly Jones, same way. It's like his art is just so ridiculous that I could care less. <laughs> I think it's great. Let's take a little look at Bane real quick. We'll get out of here. This will be a quick one. We'll be done. Um, Bane is not as detailed, but still, it's just a pretty cool pairing and they look great together. Bane by Kelly Jones. Very, very fun piece. Um, not the highest quality piece. It's, very, it's pretty heavy and it's pretty tall, actually, for, for this line. Um, but I think some of the paint could have been done better, but I don't really care. I kind of look at these things from afar, and I don't really try to overanalyze these things because they're not really too pricey. Um, I think they do the job, and I think it's really fun. When I look at them, I'm really just kind of going through my mind and enjoying that time period that I enjoyed, like Kelly Jones in the 90s, or, you know, whatever artist is represented by these things. That's kind of where I'm coming from. It's like you can tell some of these 90s guys really had no idea how, the, how anatomy worked, I think with the exception of Jim Lee. Um, the rest of them are just kind of like making this stuff up as they go. They're just totally riffing, just having a good time. And I love that about these guys. I think it's fun. And their style turned out to be a little more interesting. 
they're no Da Vinci or anything, and I'm glad they're not. I think it's more fun that way. Yeah, look at all these lines here, it's just so funny. All the stress in the, in the neck. It's like, man, how does Bane sleep at night? I think Bane definitely needs a waterbed. I just think he's one of those guys. He's a waterbed dude, he probably has like a TV tray. He eats like Swanson trays, and he probably doesn't eat all the peas, even though he should. Really cool piece though, I really like this. I know it's kind of a silly looking thing, and most people are like, ooh, that's dumb. If you ask me, this, this is great. Really brings me back to those times when comics were just fun and cool, experimental, and everyone was making tons of money. And uh, man, I'm, I'm, I hope Kedley Jones made a pretty good living off these covers because I think he deserves it. All right, that's gonna do it. That was a look at the Batman Black and White, Batman and Bane by Kelly Jones from a time period that was just super freaking cool. The comics were awesome. Um, man, the artists were great. They took chances. They did all kinds of crazy things. You had action figures, you had really cool movies. Uh, the music was great. The comedy was awesome. It's like, what doesn't suck? about the 90s. Hold on. Wait a minute, hold on. I think I know what bothered me the most about the 90s. Now that I think about it. It was Pearl Jam. Pearl Jam bugs the crap out of me. Alright, that's gonna do it. Remember, spade new your pets, and Magneto was right. We'll see you next time.